Hello and welcome to another Literacy Ready Training Refresher. This training refresher focuses on English Unit 1, Lesson 4, and it's the Franklin, Emerson, and Douglas excerpt work focused on the power of literacy. This activity is a little bit complicated, so I thought I would provide a little more detail about what students will be doing and what you need to do as a teacher. What will students do in small groups? They're going to read one of the three excerpts. So each group will read a different excerpt, one from Franklin, one from Everson, one from Douglas. They're going to examine their particular excerpt for agreement or disagreement with Carr's argument. And there's a page in the academic notebook that they complete for that. And then they're going to write a rhetorical precy again on their assigned ex excerpt, again in the academic notebook. Once all of that work is done on the three different excerpts, and remember each group only reads one excerpt, so there's a bit of a jigsaw going on here, then the groups will report out and the rest of the class will use their reporting to complete what is honestly a rather complicated Venn diagram. At the end of all of that, we're going to try to make some sense of it and to focus a little bit on synthesis writing through the teacher modeling writing a synthesis paragraph for students. So prior to this activity, you've done a lot of work. Probably the most important to think about would be the reading and annotating of chapter four and the reading log, and then the fact that students know how to write a rhetorical precy. So I would expect that they are going to use their annotation skills as they read these excerpts from Franklin, Emerson, and Douglas, and they're certainly going to be using their knowledge of how to write a rhetorical precy as they write a rhetorical precy for their particular excerpt. As the teacher, and perhaps this can be left unsaid, it's important that you have read all three of the excerpts and are really familiar with them. All three are difficult, dense texts, and students may need assistance while they read and they develop their rhetorical praise C. Part of the reason we're asking them to work in groups to read it and to um, answer the question about agreement and disagreement with Carr and to write the rhetorical praise C together is because these are dense, difficult texts. They're challenging, and so they need to be able to have support from their peer group and also from you as they read. So, assuming that students have read their excerpt, they've written about the agreement and disagreement with Carr, they've written a rhetorical praise C, so they're really familiar with their own excerpt. At this point, we move into the time when the class is going to be making their reports out. So, what you're going to ask students to do is while the group on Franklin is presenting, uh, the rest of the students are going to be writing what they see as the main ideas for Franklin here in this circle for Franklin. Similarly, when the group that read the Emerson excerpt, they're going to be doing uh, taking notes on the main ideas in that section of the Venn diagram. And when the Douglas group is presenting, the rest of the class will be present will writing be writing down the main ideas for Douglas in um, in that uh, part of the Venn diagram. Okay, at this, that point, then the interesting part begins. So they're going to look at, as a whole class, between Emerson and Franklin, what are the commonalities? Where do they agree? And that information is going to go in this part of the Venn diagram. Similarly, between Emerson and Douglas, where do they agree? And that's going to go in this part. And again, between Douglas and Franklin, where do they agree? Or where do they overlap? that's going to go in this part. Now if you are able to find any commonalities across the three, that would go here. Uh, I haven't put a lot of emphasis on that in the lesson plans, but it's something that you can think about if you want. So once all of this is done, then you're going to ask students to go back into what they've, what they've written about all these three excerpts and to highlight anything that they think would in specific um, agree with or disagree with car. Okay, so now we're bringing in a fourth text and we're going to do that by highlighting. All right, so as I said, that was a rather complicated Venn diagram, but it's definitely doable. What, what you're going to do now is to take the um, statements or comments 
that the students highlighted as showing agreement with CAR or disagreement with CAR and make a list of those as a whole class. So put that list up on the whiteboard or on the um, document camera and make sure everyone can see it. Really talk about, talk through those. And one of the things you might want to do to prepare students to write a synthesis is to see if you can find some ways to categorize or group them. So, um, you know, is it about access to books? Is it about the impact of books on our reading, on our learning, that kind of thing? So if you can find a way to group them, that will make it easier than for you to write a simple synthesis paragraph. So you're going to look at the agreement or disagreement, choose a category, choose a degree or disagree, and you're going to write a sample synthesis paragraph. This can be a challenging thing for teachers to do. I have, I'm very aware of that. Uh, what I've done is gone through that process with all three excerpts and the disconnects and the agreements and then written this sample synthesis paragraph. You're certainly welcome to use this, but it would be best if the synthesis paragraph you write comes from the list of agreements and disagreements that your students have developed on their own. So I'll just read this one. You'll notice that what I've done is taken some statements and included some quotes from the particular text. This is really about access to books and reading and is it a good or a bad thing. So Benjamin Franklin writes quite positively about the benefits of access to books in his description of a public library, writing that those who had this access were, quote, better instructed and more intelligent. Emerson and Douglas, however, seem more conflicted in their estimation of the benefits of reading. Emerson notes that books are the best type of the influence of the past, but because they can be used poorly, they are for the scholar's idle times. Douglas describes how he learned to read as a curse rather than a blessing. This skill gave him a clear understanding of his situation as a slave without the remedy. Okay, so in the next activity, students are going to practice annotation and they're going to examine the synthesis techniques that Carr uses in the first paragraphs of chapter 5 to bring together the evidence that he uses. And eventually, in lesson 6, students will be writing their own synthesis paragraphs.